This video is going to cover the topic of box and whisker plots, also sometimes just called box plots. You can see I've already started to set up my page with my margins and my date and my topic. Now it's time to put the essential question in. The question is, how do we use a five number summary to make a box and whisker plot? First, let's find out what a box and whisker plot is. Box and whisker plots are designed to show how spread out data is in a set. It also gives a visual of the data without actually giving us all of the values. It gives sort of an overview of information. A box and whisker plot gives just five pieces of information. We call this a five number summary. A box and whisker plot looks something like this. The name comes from the idea that this is a box and the lines on the side are whiskers, like a cat, right? So kind of whiskers are sticking out. That's sort of the general idea where the name comes from. But you'll also hear it sometimes just called box plot. So how do we make this shape? How do we create this box and these whiskers? Well, we're going to need to talk about this five number summary. I'm going to turn my page and we're going to write down the five parts that are in the five number summary. The five number summary has of course five pieces in it. The first item is the minimum. The minimum is the lowest number in a set of data. In addition to the minimum, there is a maximum. The maximum is the largest number in your data. Once you have your minimum and your maximum, you also need the median. That's something we already know how to find, right? That's the halfway point of all the values in the data set. We often think of it as the middle number. The last two parts are the upper and lower quartiles. We worked with the lower and upper quartiles in our last video. Be sure to review that video at any time or in your notes at any time if you need a reminder. Let's take a minute to look at the five number summary for a set of data and then see how we use that to represent it with a box and whisker plot. All right, so I'm going to turn my page and show you a set of data. Let's let this set represent the age of people who were interviewed while they were shopping at the Lloyd Center. The first thing we need to do is put these numbers in order from least to greatest. That's always our very first step. So I'm going to rewrite these, retype these, in order from least to greatest. You can go ahead and do that as well in your journal, and then unpause the video when you're ready to check. Now that I have my numbers in order, I can make a list of the five numbers in my five number summary. I'm going to just make a list of the five things I need and then we'll fill them in as we go. The first item is the minimum. What is the lowest number in all of our data? Well, the youngest person I see on this list is 12. Next we have the maximum. The maximum is 52. There was no one older than 52 in my set. The median is in the middle. Take a minute, make sure you have the median figured out, right? Work your way in to the center. Hopefully you found that the middle number was 18. And remember what that means. Half of the people are 18 or older and half of the people were 18 or younger. Let's find the lower quartile. Remember from the last video that we find the lower quartile by finding the half point of the lower half of the data. So here are the numbers that are the lower half of the data. If I look for the middle number, my lower quartile is 15. I'm going to do the same thing for my upper quartile. Here's my upper half of the data. I look for the middle number. My upper quartile is 24. Now we have everything we need to make our box and whisker plot. I need to turn my page, but I have to keep these numbers handy, so make sure you have these still in front of you. You might still be working on the same page, right? But just make sure you have these five numbers handy and ready. 
the first thing you probably notice is that I already have a title ready. Right? This box and whisker plot is going to describe the age of the Lloyd Center shoppers. The next thing I need to do is to make a number line, and I want to use a consistent scale. Since I'm going from 12 to 52, I think I'll count by fives. And I'm going to start, instead of starting at zero, I'm actually just going to start at 10. That'll cover me all the way to my minimum, which was 12. All right, so the median was 18. I'm going to start with my 18. I'm going to make a line, a vertical line, floating above the median, which was 18. It's not 15 and it's not 20, so I can't go quite as far as the 20. I think 18 is right about here on my number line. Then I'm going to do the same thing with my lower and upper quartiles. The lower quartile was 15, so here it is floating up on top of the 15, and my upper quartile was 24. Not quite 25, but close. Now I make a box, a rectangle, or box, since it's a box and whisker plot, right, connecting those three points. This rectangle is a quick snapshot that shows where 50%, the middle 50% of my data is. There are 50% of the people that were interviewed or surveyed were between the ages of 15 and 24. Now I'm going to put a dot floating above the maximum and the minimum. The minimum was 12, which is about here, a little bit past the 10, and the maximum was all the way at 52, which is just a little bit past the 50. I'm going to connect these dots to the box with straight lines. These are what we call the whiskers. Notice the whiskers aren't even. That's okay, they won't always be even. The length of the whiskers actually just make it really clear how far some of the data is from the typical age. I can see this line is so long that helps me realize that 52 is probably an outlier. And that's how you make a box and whisker plot. Right? It doesn't give us every piece of information, but it gives a visual overview of where the data is. Most of it is between around 15 to 25, right? and there are extremes down at 12 and 52. I'm going to give you one more set, and I want you to try to come up with the five-point summary and create a box, or box and whisker plot for this set. And then when you're done, you'll be able to unpause it and compare it with the one that I've done. All right, so these numbers represent the number of shots taken by Timbers in a soccer game. I want you to go through the steps that we saw to do the box and whisker plot. Remember that the first thing you'll want to do is put these numbers in order from least to greatest, and then you'll want to find your five point summary. Did we get the same thing? I hope so. Now we're going to take this and turn it into a box and whisker. I'll make mine, you make yours when you're ready. Unpause and see how we did. Here's my box and whisker. How'd we do? The box and whisker on mine might be a little bit hard to read. My pen's a little tricky on here, but it does still give us all the important information. Right. We know that 50% of the time, the, stu the timbers shot somewhere between 6 and 15 shots in a game. Right. We also know that the median was just around 12, right? just a little bit more than 12. We know that means that half of the time they had more than 12 shots and half of the time they had less than 12 shots. Right. And we can also see what our highest and lowest values are. Right. So we know that once they made as many as 21, just about 21 shots, and one time they only were able to have three shots. 
So back to our essential question. Do we know what makes a five-point summary? What five numbers we need? And do we know how to then put that into a box and whisker plot? Review anything that might be confusing. We'll work on this more in class. Be sure to write any questions that you might have in the margins.